Hi, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. Oh, there you go. There I am. All right. So what we're going to go over today is we're going to continue with unit nine. And we're going to talk about how do you fit a straight line to data. And we're also going to talk about why we would do that and how we would do that. So I'm going to share my screen with you guys. Boop. There we go. All right. So unit nine, fitting a line to data. And we're going to start with the equation y equals a plus bx. So you probably recognize this. We usually see this as y equals mx plus b. <clears throat> For some reason in statistics, they use an a and a b. Don't ask me why, but they do. When we're looking at writing the equation of a line, we have to find two things. We have to find B, which is the slope. And we also have to find A, which is our y-intercept. So if we were to mark these on a graph, we would have our A value right here, which happens at zero and A. And then what our slope is, is it's going to tell us how our Y changes as our X changes. So the question is, why would we want to find a line that fit our data? So we want to find a line find a line using known data so we can use it to estimate unknown data. So these sorts of things are used actually all the time. So if we have a patient in the hospital for some reason and we need to estimate how tall they are, sometimes it's hard to get their height because they're laying in a hospital bed, they can't sit up straight, they can't stand up straight. So sometimes in hospitals what they do is that they estimate somebody's height using another measurement, like say their wingspan or the length of their arm from their hand to their elbow. So what this does is this allows them to estimate somebody's height, which they don't know, using something that they do know based off of a lot of data. And we call it an estimation because we might be off by a little bit, but it gives us an idea of um, what to expect. All right, so before we get into building this line and um, how do we use the numbers, I'm just going to go over where some of these numbers Come from and how we use them. So, let's say that we have this data and we're fitting a line to the data. So, what are um, what our numbers are going to have is that our x is a numerical variable and our y is a numerical variable. So they're both going to have some sort of average. So we're going to have an average x bar and some average y bar. So what those two averages are going to do is they're going to give us a nice little center point 
for our line. Where should the middle of our line go? Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is how do we figure out what the slope of our line should be, right? <clears throat> so if we want to figure out what the slope of our line is going to be, we probably want to know how much our x typically changes and how much our y typically changes. Another way to think about that is how much do our values usually deviate from the average? So can anybody tell me what word we use in statistics when we talk about how much something deviates from the average? Maybe the standard amount that it deviates from the average? Standard deviation. Yay, thank you, Tanya. So we use standard deviation. So we're like, well, I know that X values are typically going to deviate from the average by some standard deviation for X. And I know that my Y values are going to deviate by the standard deviation of Y. So what we're going to do is that we're going to use those two numbers to help us find the slope. Now, remember, the slope, which we usually call M, but for some reason in statistics they call it B, what we do is that we take the change in X, or I'm sorry, the change in Y, divided by the change in X. Now when we're looking at numerical variables, especially in statistics, the change in Y and the change in X well, that's going to be the deviation. That's going to be the standard deviation. So that would be SY over SX. Now, one thing that we know from last class is that these two variables might not be as strongly related as we want them to be. So maybe it is a perfect one-to-one, -one. like I can definitely tell you what Y is if you tell me what X is and vice versa, or it might not have a weaker relationship, okay? And what's going to happen is that the further my data values go from the center point, the more they might stray away from each other, the more variation I might have. So what I'm going to do is that I want to edit the slope and the way I'm going to edit it to make sure that I hit as many points as I can, depending on how strongly related these those are, is I'm going to multiply it by our correlation coefficient, or R. So that is going to give you the slope for this line. All right. The next thing that we need to find when we're trying to find the equation for a line is you have to find the y-intercept. Now, typically you would enter in a value and you would find um, what the slope was after you put in the, or you would put in the slope and you put in a point and then you figure out what the y-intercept is. We don't have to do that. We have an equation for it. So what the y-intercept is going to be, which we call A. I'll move this up so you guys can see it a little bit better. To find that, we're going to take the average minus the slope times the average of x. All right, so there are the two formulas that you definitely need to know, especially for your final exam. These questions are going to be on the final exam, so make sure that you have them written down, put a star next to them, something like that. Wait, so the y, 
or the y intercept is the same as the average is that so the y intercept is going to use the average of both variables in order to be found okay All right. So give me a thumbs up when you guys have that written down so I can move on to the next example. Yay, thanks, Evan. Thanks, Ashley. Thanks, Talia. Thanks, Hannah. All right. So for the next example, what I'm going to have you guys do is I'm going to have you pull up some data and we're going to answer a couple of questions about it. So I'm going to go ahead and put the link into the chat. Okay, and we're going to be looking at problem number 72. So let me know when you get to problem number 72 on that website and then we will move on. All right, so once you get to problem 72, here is what I would like you guys to do, is the following. So go ahead and write these questions down. So the first thing I would like you to do is plot the points on the table. And comment on what you think the strengths, the trends, and the shape are. So after you guys do that, we're going to come back together. And we're just going to work through a couple of problems together on that graph. So make sure that you don't close it out after you do that. So remember to do that, you are going to copy this data and then you're going to go to Desmos and you're going to paste it in. So go to Desmos and paste it in. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put you guys in a breakout room just for um, probably like three minutes so you guys can talk to each other and share what you think the strength, trend, and shape are.
All right, so I have a printout of the graph that we were working with. And I just want to analyze this graph before we get into solving the three questions that we had. So on this graph, what we have is that we have the height of the building, which is our X, and we have the stories, which are our Y value. Now, an equation we came up with in order to figure out how can we estimate the height of a building or figure out the stories the building has if we know the height is we came up with this equation, which was 0.0757x minus 1.9764. So, what this equation means is if you want to figure out how many stories a building has, you're going to take the height, multiply it by this number, and then subtract 1.9764. So <clears throat> what that 1.9764 is, is that is the y-intercept. And then what the slope is, is as we increase our x, that is telling us how much we have to increase our y value. So for the first question that we were looking at, where we wanted to use the equation to estimate the height of a building that has 60 stories. Well, 60 stories, that's our y value right here. So we're going to have to plug 60 into that. And since we're trying to solve for the height, we're going to have to solve for x. So we're going to add that 1.9764 to both sides. So we're going to get 61.9764 equals that 0.0757x. Divide both sides by that 0.075x, and you're going to get an x value that's about 818-ish. So what that tells me is that if a building has 60 stories, we're going to estimate that it has a height of about 818. Now, if I look at my Desmos graph, if I look at where 60 is, so 60 is about right here, so 60 stories, and I look at my line, I follow it down to the x-axis, it's a little bit above 800. So that tells me that I had a good estimation. Also, if you clicked on this guy and try to get to about 60 for your y value, about right here, you're going to see that you have an x value of 818, so we did good. So remember, these relationships work both ways. If you know your x, you can estimate your y. If you know your y, you can estimate your x. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an outlier in here deliberately. So a good outlier that I'm going to choose is I'm going to choose the outlier um, 400. And then for my y value, I'm going to do 150. So I put this outlier in, which is way far away from all of my other points. 
And what I saw happen after I put that outlier in is that my line jumped up like it's trying to reach that outlier or get closer to it. The other thing I noticed is that it changed my R value. So my R value was 0.9 something and now it went all the way down to 0.545. So the further that outlier is, not only away from the middle of my line, but from my points here, it's going to pull my line up towards it. This is going to shift everything, which means that none of my predictions are going to be accurate anymore. So that leads me into what we're going to talk about tomorrow, which is how do you come up with the equation of the line? What can affect that equation? And how do you fix it? So that is what we're going to talk about tomorrow. Um, if there's some topic that we went over today that doesn't feel clear or you're kind of having a hard time with, what we should do is that you should take a at least a two hour break from math and go do something mindless. Um, and then email me and be like, can we do another example of that tomorrow? And I would be more than happy to do that. Okay. Also, one more uh, announcement before I let you guys go. The final exam review is posted under the final um, exam button. So if you click on that, it'll give you a breakdown of what you can expect on the final, the final exam review, and then the final exam, which we'll be reviewing on Friday. So that is all I have for you guys today for class. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and I will see you bright and early tomorrow.